Now a quick introduction to what's called ultramafic soils. Ultramafic soils are almost always associated with subduction zones. They're also known as serpentine soils and uh, they're often very barren of plant life being to the fact that they're uh, toxic uh, to most uh, plants. That is they have minerals uh, like nickel, magnesium and excess amounts of iron while also lacking essential plant nutrients such as calcium and nitrogen. So many plants have a hard time growing in them but many other plants uh, have adapted to them. That's not that they say that they necessarily thrive in them but they're able to tolerate uh, the soil chemistry and uh, here's one of them. So you get, you get a lot of endemics basically and here's one of them. This is Areogonum preclarum. It's a, it's a buckwheat and it's known only from this area, from the ultramafic soils in a, this uh, serpentine area, uh, which of course, uh, you know, is not just uh, notable for its ultramafic soils, but also notable for the fact that it is in a desert. So, uh, you know, you get the, you get the elephant trees and Lophosiria shadii growing on a, growing on these ultramafics. So anyway, back to what I was saying about Areogonum preclarum. Uh, I believe this was only named in 1995. And uh, you could see that it's beautiful flowers. Little flowers there with the hairy stems, hairy, almost glandular stems. And uh, look at that involucre on that buckwheat. Isn't that nice? It's a coalescent buckwheat. And of course, the old uh, foliage uh, is it the senescence. It just stays attached to the rest of the stem and uh, it has this nice kind of candelabra shape. The foliage itself, of course, has a very waxy cuticle on it and uh, very minute, tiny hairs. There's also another Areogonum from this area called Areogonum in celioides. And there's also a uh, another rare aster called uh, Baja Kelia. There's three species of Baja Kelia. This one's Moranii, and uh, the foliage is just laden with the uh, terpenes and uh, other uh, chemicals that make it smell almost like lemon, kind of like uh, like a mixture of tar and lemon. Look at that nice tube that the locals hung up. This wasn't here last time I was here. They're running a water line. Looks a little bit tacky, but it gets the job done, I guess. Anyway, so, so serpentine, uh, a.k.a. ultramafic soils. Look at that nice bursera up there. Anyway, uh, serpentine is a, technically an ultramafic soil. Uh, like I was saying, excuse me, it's a metamorphic soil. Ultramafic and metamorphic. So it occurs in subduction zones, and it's basically a, a part of oceanic crust that's accreted to the continent. And it's a subduction zone, which of course, if you don't know about, you should, because it's basically the recycling of oceanic crust which is constantly being generated at seafloor spreading centers and then uh, being recycled back into the mantle. So it's coming up at seafloor spreading centers and being recycled back into the mantle at the subduction zones. Anywhere you get a subduction zone, you're going to get volcanism and sometimes uh, serpentine soils. So uh, anyway, uh, subduction zones are always associated, or serpentine is always associated with subduction zones. And... Uh, you know, anywhere there's serpentine, uh, there is or has been a subduction zone. Because these are rocks you don't normally see on the surface of the earth. There's a ton of them in Northern California. I've just never seen one in the desert before until a few months ago. So here's a Pleurocoronis uh, lefamioides, another species of what's called arrow leaf. It's in the aster family. And, uh, Pleurocoronis pleurisata is a species that we get that we get in the deserts of uh, Southern California. Here's another species. This doesn't smell as strong or as nice, but it's uh, is a Pleurocoronis pleurisata. But it's still got those discoid flowers. You can see those. And then, of course, when they open, the phyleries are still there. Oh, look at the pappus. See the pappus? Look at all that seed just getting ready to be blown away by the wind. Take me away. Take me away. Trixis californica is also another ubiquitous plant. 
another ubiquitous aster. Unfortunately, this one's not in flower right now, but uh, it's so common. And then the star of the show over here, which is amazing. I was so happy to be able to see this, to be able to see this plant doing its thing, flowering. Oh, what an enigmatic plant. Rus lentiae. I can hear, can you hear the buzzing? Can you hear the buzzing? This, this green is all new foliage. Once it uh, hardens off, quote, it's got that beautiful blue luster to it. Like a powdery blue luster. And look at those flowers. And this is another endemic to this region. Also occurs on Cedros Island, which is just a little bit off the coast. Anyway, so here's another jammer. This is Baja Kelia moranii, and it's one of the most pungent smelling asters I've ever smelled. Again, this genus has three species on in it. This is a, I don't know if this is a serpentine endemic or what, but it's only known from, uh, from this region, I believe. Look at those discoid flowers. Look at those spiky phyleries. Look at that uh, heavily glandular foliage. It smells like lemon and tar. Well, look at that. Isn't that nice? It's so nice. Well, look at this. Perhaps it's another serpentine endemic buckwheat. Could it be? In full frontal nudity. Ah, look at that. Ah, oh, it's gorgeous. Look at that Dudley up there. It's flowering too. How nice is that going to be? Anyways, so here's a typical serpentine barren hillside. Very harsh environment for a plant, although there's a bladder pod growing there. There's also this uh, odd brassica that appears so beautiful. Some sort of brassica, as you can tell by those fruits, those slender fruits and those four petals. And once again, we see the importance of uh, lichens and cyanobacteria in a general soil crust in holding the soil together and stabilizing it. Of course, serpentine, that's another trait of it. It's very brittle, very easily breakable, and uh, and just these, these just very unstable rack. So you could see, you got some nice lichen going on there. This little black soil crust, which I'm sure uh, turns a little bit more green once it gets some moisture. I'd love to see this place in a rain. So I have since been able to uh, ascend this uh, vertical crevasse uh, without breaking my ass. And uh, here's this beautiful Dudley uh, in flower. What a treat to see. I was here in October, I didn't see it. Look at that fucking soil crust everywhere. Look at it, look how nice that is. Look, just a thick, a thick crust, like melted cheese on top of a pizza. Holding the entire, uh, the entire thing together. And here's that, uh, that lovely brassica again. What could that be? Look at that foliage. Look at that beautiful, lacy foliage. Another one of those buckwheats. It's so quiet. I'm probably the uh, loudest and most obnoxious thing for miles. Now this is a quite uh, a common tree down here, Pachycormus discolor. It's all over the peninsula. Anacardiaceae, poison oak family, mango family. But uh, I still can't get over how fucking weird they look. Especially growing on serpentine. Especially growing on a very harsh soil. That's probably a 300 year old tree. Whoa. Right there. Look at this one over here. All laid out. Like a fat guy on a couch. Look at that, more uh, Pachycormus discolor. You don't have to pronounce it like that unless you're a jackass like me. Anyway, uh, yeah, again, Anacardiaceae, uh, mango, cashew, poison oak family. It's a sumac, monotypic genus. Extremely add. Drought deciduous, drops its leaves. Uh, once uh, the wet season is over.
But look at this nice uh, agave vizcainoensis. Another uh, endemic to the region. Look at that thick cuticle it's got on it. You can almost see it. You could look at those pores. Look at that nice thick cuticle. Oh, what a beautiful plant. I love this guy. Look, it's the very odd Oligomerus linifolia, a plant uh, in the Residaceae family known from Xeric uh, regions all over the world, which is especially kind of weird. I believe it's got three stamens. Uh, really odd flowers here. This, uh, this plant confounds me. I don't know how it got everywhere. I don't know much about it. I've never heard of the Residaceae family. I don't know what the fuck that is. But uh, nice view of the barrens. The serpentine barrens. Also, this white rock that you're seeing everywhere, I believe, is a magnesium carbonate. They're magnesium carbonate nodules, and you get them in a silica. Or nice, not, not silica, excuse me, in serpentine a lot. Got so many fucking words just rattling around inside my head. I get them confused sometimes. I'm going to be one hell of a geriatric when I get the senile if I make it. Now, as you can see, serpentine is a very unstable substrate. What we're doing is mildly dangerous due to uh, the uh, propensity of uh, ultramafic soils to uh, give out and uh, you could fall and break your ass real easy. I stand corrected. That Areogonum and celioides is so good at fooling you into thinking that it's an aster that it actually worked on me. So here uh, is a species of Vigiera, which uh, I thought was uh, that Areogonum, but uh, it is not. <laughs> Look at those, look at those capitulescences. I've seen this in flower on this peninsula uh, last October. Looks like there even might be some seed. What a lovely exposure of ultramafic soil, of the serpentine soil syndrome. You can see how it's red on top. That's because uh, obviously on the sides uh, it's uh, constantly eroding uh, whereas up top it's uh, more stable and has a more constant exposure of the iron content in this uh, rack is a more constant exposure to the oxygen in the atmosphere and so it weathers to a, a much uh, redder color than the sides which just stay blue and again are constantly eroding and uh, weathering falling uh, down into the crevasses in the washes right there there you see look it's a species of fagonia Zygophilaceae, same family as creosote. Just matted over this rack. How lovely. Very brittle, stiff and spiky, as it should be, growing in such a xeric environment. You can see how it's almost been krumholzed over this boulder. Very, very barren. Soil's toxic and uh, there's no moisture here, so. It's a very hard environment. You get on some of these ridges though, there's a lot more going on. The elephant trees provide somewhat of a micro habitat for things to grow under and become a stable. Anyway, here we go. Here's uh, the uh, Areogonum in celioides. As you can tell by the inflorescences, you can see it looks so much like that uh, Vigera, that aster that we've seen up there that I originally thought this was. It's got the same white, very velvety uh, leaves same general growth habit it's just uh utilizing the same way of coping with the the lack of moisture the intense sun and the heat call it a case of convergent evolution if you will another salvia cedro census again so many species of variagonum here what a beaut that one is the fog is finally burned off and uh, it's getting kind of hot, so I might head down uh, before uh, the dogs are uh, killed. Now, another thing about the serpentine soils is that it sometimes contains asbestos, uh, which I might have breathed in quite a bit uh, scrambling up here. Oh, is this that species of... Uh, this is an undescribed species of Madalea. 
John Rubman's actually in the process of naming it. I didn't uh, realize it was here, though. It's not flowering. It's in the milkweed family. It's M-A-P-E-L-E-A. -E Look at that. Look at those chordate leaves. Little heart-shaped leaves. Anyway, I, as I was saying, I breathed in a bunch of asbestos probably coming up here. But uh, with the, uh, the the serpentine soil syndrome, Louis, what are you doing? Can you come over here? You don't need to go over there. Come over here. Okay, anyway, she's neurotic, trying to get out of the heat. But you can see, look at all that color. Now, this little enclave, obviously that rock was harder than whatever eroded beneath it. And it's slowly being eroded down into this wash. Uh, but uh, could you see the tortured rock? Look at all the, the veins of different minerals being shot through there. Lots of water uh, is normally uh, included in the metamorphosis, the metamorphic, <laughs> the metamorphic uh, conversion of a uh, serpent. What the hell am I talking about? You know, I don't know. I don't know. It's hot. I need some water. But I was just remarking on the texture and the color of this uh, beautiful uh, outcropping of uh, ultramafic soil right there. So much blue and beige. And then, of course, veins of uh, whatever the hell that is, magnesium carbonate being shot through there. God, I love this rock. Can you tell? Okay, one last thing before I break my ass uh, getting down uh, off this ridge. Uh, if you'll notice, these two different species of Ariagonum uh, apparently flower at different times. The, the greener one, Ariagonum preclarum, is flowering now. And the uh, whiter-leaved one, the more uh, tomentose-leaved one, uh, is if, if flowers I think in a fall maybe a late summer I was here in October and I seen it the uh, just kind of finishing up flowering really nice habitat though you got a fedra you got the gambilia two species of Ariagonum, some sporalcia ambrosia all over the place and whatnot you got roots lentii etc get that Baja Calia of course growing right here such a stinky plant. Look at the glands. Just look at those glands. Look at all those white puffs. It's all that Ariagonum and Celioides.